Welcome to the Module 1 Mid-Unit 2 Assessment Study Guide Explanation. Please have in front of you your Module 1 Mid-Unit 2 Assessment Study Guide. That way you can read along while I'm reading out loud to you. At the top it says this assessment is based on Chapter 9 in the book and allows the students to show how well they can analyze the chapter. So boys and girls, that tells us that your test is on the information that's in Chapter 9. What we've been doing so far with all the other chapters is analyzing them. So we've been practicing going through what happens in the chapter, what the chapter titles have to do with the events in the chapter. We've been making inferences, our own thoughts about the characters and the events that have happened in the chapters. We've been looking at figurative language. All of the things that we've been doing, we're going to test it out on Chapter 9. This quiz does not include an essay. Phew! <laughs> there are several short response questions and a graphic organizer, which is a chart, to fill in. Students will be able to summarize in one to two sentences what the chapter is mostly about. Now, boys and girls, when you summarize, remember to include just the main ideas. You don't want to retell the chapter. You just want to tell what the most important ideas are or events that happened in the chapter. A way to start this out would be to say, in chapter 9, and then go on to say, to say what happened. The next item on the list is to explain the title of the chapter. What that means is that you have to be able to tell why the chapter is called Plums. So why is it called Plums? What do Plums have to do with the main events or ideas in the chapter? You may have to go back and find that, but you know that that's a question that you're going to have on your test. The next bulleted item says, identify Esperanza's main challenges in the chapter. Please note, these are not challenges to Esperanza's rights, but difficult situations that she faces. So boys and girls, you're going to think about what happened in the story in chapter 9 and what was difficult for Esperanza in Chapter 9? I bet you can think of a couple situations that were very difficult for Esperanza. If you can, then you are on the right track. Going back to your study guide, the next sentence says, Students must also be able to explain how Esperanza responds to each challenge and what her response tells us about her as a person. And we've been doing this and practicing um, with Esperanza, with Miguel, with Mama, and with Abuelita. We've gone through the chapters and talked about and written down some things on our charts about how they respond to challenges and then what that tells us about them each as a person. So it says on your sheet, for each challenge, ask your child, this would be if your parents were helping you, how Esperanza responds. So what does she do or say? So think about one of the difficult situations that Esperanza faces in the chapter. What does she do or say in that situation. That's her response. The next part says, 
think about Esperanza's responses to her challenges. What does what she does or says in difficult situations tell us about her as a person? So when you think about her actions or what she says, you're going to say to yourself, hmm, is Esperanza showing perseverance? Maybe she's not giving up and she's trying really hard to find a solution to a problem. Well, you could say that her response shows you perseverance. Is she determined? Is she determined not to give up to find a solution? You could even say that. Okay? Does she continue to try different solutions to problems even if one doesn't work? Is she frustrated? Is she angry? Is she afraid? The last bullet says explain what the figurative language on page 157 means. In parentheses, it gives you two examples, and here they are. She felt the blood drain from her face, and her voice strangled with fear. Now, we have been learning about figurative language, finding it in the text and analyzing what the figurative language means um, for the last few days. So you have to be able to know what those two sentences mean. She felt the blood drain from her face and her voice strangled with fear. Now, in the first one, you might think, is the blood actually draining from her face? No. So what does the author mean by that instead? With the second example, her voice strangled with fear. You might think, hmm, strangled. Is her voice strangled? No but the author is using that phrase or that sentence to describe something to us about Esperanza. How do these phrases help us to understand how Esperanza is feeling? Boys and girls, I hope this was helpful for you and for your parents. Thank you for listening and best wishes on your test. I know that if you follow this study guide and you do your best, you're going to do a great job. This concludes the Module 1 Mid-Unit 2 Assessment Study Guide. Thank you.